of it, just a parameter. Okay. So it, it'll vary from distribution to distribution, and X min is the minimum level of talent. Yeah. Wait, is that talent for just in each individual person or for the entire group? Or for, for, for each individual person. Okay. Um, so this distribution behaves roughly like a log normal distribution until you get very, very high into the talent range. And then it just gets much, much more fat tailed than even a, a log normal distribution. Um, so, um, Jeff Bollinger, could you um, tell us something about the Proto distribution or like what its properties are like or just an anything you remember from reading the Gebex paper about it? <coughs> is that what he called it? Is that a name for the most called uh, the power function? Uh, the power function that it power law, yeah. Um, so I, I think it can be used to model on a logarithmic scale. Um, the population of cities relative to their ranking yeah. um, in a country. That's right. And then they also had it for firm but, but do you remember some of the ways that he sort of described the law? Like, you know, what was the sort of striking way of thinking about it? Or uh, I guess so the one thing I remember is that he, he said that it, it came up again and again, but they couldn't always account for it completely in theory. Mm -hmm. um, so they... Particularly, I think the coefficients or the um, the the number that is raised on the yeah uh, that that tended to be fairly constant between examples in a particular area, and they couldn't necessarily yeah. explain why. So, what's the number raised? I think to often think? once. Yeah, but what can you can you give an intuitive description of like how do different cities differ if if the coefficient is one? Do you remember? Uh, that might take me to that. Okay. I don't know. So the basic idea is that the fraction, so here's a few different ways of thinking about it. The fraction of people with talent that's greater than 2x is 1 over 2 to the alpha times the fraction of people with the talent x, above the talent above x. So if alpha was 1, that would say that if if this is the level of talent or if this is the income, if there are, you know, a um, hundred people earning more than a hundred thousand dollars. <coughs> there will be fifty people earning more than two hundred thousand dollars. So as you see, that's sort of like a very slow process of dying out, right? So, like, if you went to, um, you know, uh, if you went to four hundred thousand dollars, there would still be twenty-five people earning more than that. So it's a very slow process of like dying out, being above. Uh, some level. Another way to think about it, um, which was related to what Jeff was saying, is that the fifth most talented person is one over, that is if alpha is equal to one, then the fifth most talented person is one fifth as talented as the most talented person. So that means that there's huge differences between people at the very top, right? And the further to the top you get, the bigger the differences are, basically. Because the third and the fourth person are only you know, 1 over 3 over 1 over 4 compared to one another. So the fourth person is 3 fourths as good as the uh, third person. But the second person is only 1 half as good as the first person. Yeah, Michael? Can you explain the first one here, the first explanation? OK, so if there are, um, Imagine that we want to say that, like, uh, you know, the imagine that the grade distribution was the talent, right? And imagine that uh, there are ten people who get a grade above, uh, you know, ninety-five, right? Then there would be five people who get a grade above a hundred and ninety. That's that's sort of the idea, right? So it's like if someone is twice as if you double the level of talent, you only cut in half the number of people who are get, doing better than that level. Okay. You see, but but it, but it depends on the alpha coefficient. So if alpha is greater, it'll die off faster. Yeah. <coughs> this is like a theory, like like is it that that's not like true, like for like I don't know, I'm just sort of thinking like basketball. Like the second most talented person is like very closely talented, but it's like 
Like they can't even decide. Like it's an argument on Sports Center, really. Like who's the most talented, right? But well, so I'm going to show you some things for which this is definitely true, and then the other things. It's I mean, in many of these things, it's going to be a little bit of a matter of interpretation. But actually, in terms of like salaries and stuff, I, I haven't looked at it, but I would guess that Zip's law is pretty darn close, actually. So I would guess that the, like the, the first best paid people in most sports earn about twice as much what the next best paid person earns. Do you mean like in terms of tiers? Is that, is that, does anyone know whether that's true or not? Like, uh, like every NBA team like almost has like a max salary guy. And like, like well, Johnson's but imagine that they, they didn't. Like, so there, there might be that, you know, the point is that th there are these artificial things that are keeping the salaries down. But if you look at like music, art, like musical artists, like the most, th it follows this almost perfectly. So the best paid person, the best paid musician earns twice what the next best paid and three times what the third best paid and so forth. And they get closer as you move down. But the top person is always way better than the next person. Yeah. Karen. Actually, that's true. If you watch like the E channel and yeah. talk about you know, the top 10 best paid stars, yeah. the ones who are at the top are making hundreds of millions, while the ones at the bottom are making 10, 15 million a year. Yeah. So the distribution really does one. Well, so, and, and I'll show you some things where this is really does Hold. So, just to give you a sense, this is the inverse hazard rate. So this is one over that hazard rate, and you see that um, the Pareto, the log normal distribution and Pareto are very similar until you get very high, and then the Pareto distribution just gets enormously higher than the log normal distribution is. So the tails are much much fatter. So here's an example of Zipf's law. <coughs> so if you ask what is the log of the size of different companies, either within a given industry or across all, all industries in the United States, and you ask what's the log of how many companies of that size there are, Zip's law should say that this is a um, downward sloping line with a coefficient of exactly one. And that is exactly what you get. No matter how you cut it, you almost always get exactly Zip's law, which is just Amazing. 